This is a quick video to show you some of the features of Megas Flats. If you'd like to follow along, you can load the example scene that's located in Megas Flat Examples Scenes. So if you are not where I am, uh, if you open this uh, mesh object here and double click on the boulder, uh, then you should end up where, where I am. So Megasplat is a splat map shader, but unlike traditional splat map shaders, it allows for hundreds of textures to be painted uh, using the, the power of uh, Unity 5.4's texture array feature. So a texture array is really just a whole bunch of textures packed into one uh, file that the GPU can work with. Um, so the surfaces we're looking at here are all blended together, uh, painted from Megasplats, and you can see how the transitions between these different surfaces um, are natural because they use a height map to actually determine uh, which surface blends into uh, which at each pixel. So the shader itself has a lot of options. Um, one of the things is uh, before you create your textures you probably want to think about how to pack them. Um, the packing that I'm using uh, is called Normal uh, Smooth AO and what that means is that it has a diffuse texture which has a height map in the alpha channel and then the other texture is a normal, uh, the red and green channel from a normal, uh, the smoothness in the blue channel, and then an ambient occlusion in the alpha. So that gives me a fully PBR surface with per pixel uh, smoothness, normal, and uh, diffuse, and height values for parallax mapping, all in two texture samples. And in this case, I'm using a macro texture, which is a texture, texture that is stretched over the entire object using the original UVs. Um, so if I zoom out, you'll see that this crossfades into this macro texture. Uh, so we get this nice distance version of the landscape, but when we get close, we see all of this nicely painted detail. Um, so there's a lot of options in the shader. I'm not going to go over them all now, uh, but it does support things like flow mapping, uh, per texture properties that you can do, and a performance analysis so you can see how many uh, samples you are um, doing per pixel, which is a, a decent indicator of performance. So. If I want to actually paint something, uh, what I need to do is open the Vertex Painter. You can get there by uh, going to the window, Vertex Painter Pro, select that, and then what I like to do is just dock it over here. So this is actually a fully complete Vertex Painting uh, package. It does far more than just uh, what Megasplat does. In fact, Megasplat just plugs into this system. Uh, so you can paint on any of your uh, UV channels, your color channel, you can paint in different layers and treat them as you know individual channels or color channels, um, all kinds of stuff. You can deform the mesh, you can paint flow mapping information, and there's a bunch of custom utilities that allow you to do things like bake out meshes, combine them, uh, bake information into the meshes like ambient occlusion or lighting. And finally, there's a custom uh, area. The custom area allows for other applications to plug into this Vertex Painter uh, to add their own custom brushes for custom data. Uh, this came about because of some shaders we were doing at work that could we couldn't really paint the information in Photoshop, uh, so I wrote the custom feature to allow us to write custom brushes uh, easily, and Megasplat uses one of those custom brushes to work with uh, its data. So if you click on the little uh, selector uh, icon here and bring up the menu, uh, you can select different brushes here and we're going to use a Megasplat Diffuse brush. So the brush in Megasplat is uh, both a library of textures that are designed to work together. Um, so you put all your textures into one of these brushes for diffuse, normal, specular, and it will actually generate the uh, texture arrays that you need uh, and then it will also store information for painting these down. So if we, um, right now we just have one uh, mesh selected. So instead I'm going to select the meshes up here and it'll select all of these meshes so we can paint on them all at once. So if we activate the brush, the Vertex Painter, uh, you'll see you get a little brush here. You can switch the style of that. I like it as a disc. And then what I like to do is adjust the fall off and flow so we have a wider fall off. Um, usually I want to use a wide fall off. Um, and then finally, I like to turn off the wireframe because I find it distracting. Sometimes it's really useful because those are the things you're actually painting, uh, but sometimes it's just distracting and annoying. Uh, so most of the time I leave it off. Uh, so what we can do is come over to an area that is not painted. Um, let me just have some blank terrain over here. Um, so what I did initially was I filled this terrain with one texture. Um, now. 
normally with splat map painters you only have four textures so you would paint down individual textures onto the train uh, using the vertex channel or using an image map or whatever you're using and that's what you'd get right you would choose a texture and you just have that texture um, but what Megasplat allows you to do is, is have texture clusters so a texture cluster is a bunch of textures that are similar um, and so if I switch uh, you have the bottom and the top layer in this shader uh, so I'm gonna switch to multi bottom and then what I can do is actually choose a texture uh, package and when I paint this over this area what you will see is that it keeps selecting different textures as I paint and this breaks up tiling so rather than having one 2048 texture that you carefully designed to not tile you could put in four uh, 1024 textures um, scale the UVs accordingly and then use this noise function that the brush has to randomly vary those textures so even when I have this painted down over a large area you really can't see any tiling because it's randomly varying each of these textures as I paint uh, using a noise function and so you get little spaces like over here where there's more cracks and no rocks and then over here you have a bunch of rocks and all of it blends together really nicely but that's just painting a single texture down uh, on a single layer. Uh, Megasplat supports uh, painting onto multiple layers. Two. Um, so if I switch to the multi top brush, this will blend in with the layer below it. So here I can choose something like this shore sand. Okay, and I have a nice soft brush here. And when I paint, you'll see it pulls that other texture in. Um, and so now what I can do is get this really nice blend between these two uh, surfaces. And I can just put a little bit of, of one over here or, you know, a little bit of this, these rocks into the grass, whatever I want to kind of blend this stuff together in a nice manner. And often when I work, what I do is I work back and forth on these layers like I'm applying paint to a canvas. Um, so what I might do here is let me turn up the flow and turn down the fall off. And what I'll do is I'll get a nice area going with a lot of this. Uh, texture in it but because I have a little fall off on there when I sort of go out of bounds I'm getting little bits of uh, of that surface coming in so now we have if you look you know closer up you get this really complex blend between these two surfaces um, and then once I'm happy with that what I might do is is switch my layer again to go back on the bottom layer and then choose another texture and in this case maybe what I'll do is I'll take uh, maybe I'll just put some moss back in there because it's gotten a little bit uh, dead. Um, so now I can bring in, oops, my flow is really hard, turn the flow down uh, and make the brush fall off really, really nice. And so now I can bring in, I want it down even more, I can just bring in these little bits of color into this texture. So even though we only have two layers to paint on, um, because we have the ability to have hundreds of, uh, of textures that we can work with and because we can blend those two layers together in a sort of back and forth manner we can build up these really complex and rich surfaces that don't seem to have um, the sort of traditional um, you know transitions you would see in a lot of in a lot of train engines uh, go and um, yeah, this, my flow is way too light Come on. So there we go we can bring this in and you can see how it, it sort of encroaches into the cracks and onto the, the stones after it fills up the areas in between creating these really rich surfaces <laughs> 